Fantastic. All right, one d four. Uh, well, we've seen John play a play a Dutch. Feels like a Dutch is not what we want to see. Um. All right, we've got a Trompowski instead. Excellent. Um. Can end up looking a little bit like a French. But that's okay. We know how to do Frenches here. And so yeah, so we'll get a few more of these blitz matches going. And after that, I'm going to torture John a little bit more with today's challenge position. Which you should still be able to see by going and checking out his Twitter, at Hong Kong John. Uh, if you can tweet in suggestions, that'll be fantastic. We will try and incorporate them into the end. Uh, otherwise, it will be up to John to come up with good moves all on his lonesome. I wonder if I could have grabbed it. I couldn't have grabbed a pawn when that takes e5 there. Forget that. Uh, but at some point, I'm going to make a tactic like that work. Okay. Did notice one or two comments about my posture. Uh, which is terrible when I am playing chess. I will freely admit that. And I'm going to improve your posture, you're Tom. Improve my posture. Oh, oh, there we go. Excellent. Uh, but yeah, no, it's just the way I think. Is you know, are you leaning forward? It's not good for your back. I don't recommend it. But I find it very difficult to play excellent chess leaning back this relaxed. Looks like I've just had a liquid lunch. If I do that, that's a, li a little bit too relaxed. Um. So, the only thing I can say is getting up and walking around a lot, which is something I do in my over-the-board games, does at least alleviate these kind of problems. Because you do hunch over computer screens. Um, the only plus side is, uh, yeah, getting up and walking around every every 10 minutes or so. Anyway, Bishop B1, he's trying to mate me on H7. I'm not going to... It wasn't me that missed a mate in one. I technically hung a mate in one, uh, so my opponent missed it. Right, I'm going to go c4 and prevent queen d3. And then try and open things up with f5 on the king side. He's trying to trap my queen. He's trying to trap my queen. He's not going to trap my queen. Uh, so we have a lot of pawns still on the board. In fact, we've swapped off. What have we swapped off? I have a knight swapped off for his bishop. Because he went bishop g5 and took on f6. Because it was a Trompovsky and everything. Well, I think I've got a nice-ish position here. He can take on f6 en passant. And then I'm leaning towards rook takes here. Well, I can put the bishop on d6. Rook take. Yeah. Let's go with rook takes. Because, um, yeah. I, don't, I wouldn't like this move if he could play knight e5, but he can't. Bishop. Yeah, I'm just going to go rook f8 here. Don't see the reason to be overly worried just yet. Don't have any threats here just yet either. These This knight and bishop aren't really doing all that much. But then again, his knight on d2 isn't fantastic. I'm going to go bishop d6 and then think about doing something with this knight. Uh, yeah, just checking that we had increment again there. Right, I take on e2 and take on e5, and then I can't take on f2? Huh. It's kind of annoying. Am I getting my rook trapped? Knight takes, pawn takes, rook there, g3, rook there, bishop g6. My rook is actually trapped in that variation. Well... This game is not going all that well. I thought I was just better in this position. Bishop there. Bishop there. This is going badly wrong. Um. Well, there goes our positional part of the game. Oops. Yeah, I've just I just completely misassessed this. Oh well. 
we haven't dropped any material yet. And we tend to be okay at swindling later on. But... But... You know when I said I was going to make this knight, this knight and this bishop both really good pieces? Well, I'm kind of doing the opposite of that. Um... I know, the, I know Jonathan Ralston advocates talking to your pieces, but mine aren't talking to me. They're, they're that annoyed at how I've been treating them. Um, so that is not good news at all. Uh, so yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, looks like he's trying to go knight d7 and win some material. I'm just going to have to keep making my position worse. That's the only thing I can think of to do here. It's to grimly hold on. But actually, it's not as grim as I thought. No, we, we are over the worst of it, perhaps. Do I want to exchange sacrifice? No. No, I was trying to work out if I was worried by takes on c6 and knight d4. The answer is I'm not. So no exchange sacrifices here. Uh, I'm not ruling it out yet. Well, right, we're going to go bishop d7 first and then c5. 40 seconds plays 43, plus a two second increment. Uh, endings are probably one of my fortes, especially in blitz. Feel pretty confident I can outplay him from this position. Let's get the pressure mounting up. Knight c2, bishop c6. Threatening d4 check. Uh, Alright, and now g5 to stop things happening. Bad things. Things of the bad, bad things. Um, Alright, we're going to take that off. And then bring a rook in. Yeah, let's just keep putting the pressure up. Building up a nice little time advantage here. Knight e3, d4. Chops, chops, knight g4. Let's just grab this pawn. It's probably quite a good decision by him to gambit the pawn in this position. But I've got no choice but to take it. As far as I can see. And then rook takes and bishop d7. Okay, so we're pawn ahead. Uh, I'm going to put rooks behind past pawns because that's something... I should have gone a4. Ooh. Should have gone a4. Okay, let's go rook here. Uh, we're fine again. And pushing this pawn. Uh, let's bring our king into the game. Uh, push this pawn. And check. Excellent. That's our second pawn ahead. And we have built ourselves a nice useful lead on the clock. Alright, where's the win in this position? Uh, let's just make sure we stay two pawns ahead. He's going to go rook a7. Yep. So I've already messed up one completely winning ending by hanging a mate in one. Let's see if I can win a little bit more smoothly here. Have a little bit more time. Uh... Just trying not to blunder here. One of the downsides to having such a winning position is that you just get paranoid about moves that you make all being blunders. Whereas the player who's behind can just play with a bit more freedom. But having said which, should be completely okay here. Yeah, that should be pretty much it. Let's go here. Uh, how is this still so difficult? Don't really want to exchange off the bishop for the knight. I'm trying to be greedy and keep everything here. But I maybe I should just take that off at some point. Alright, back to our plan of pushing the pawn. And go bishop here. Rook here. Still holding on to things. Oh, I've blundered the bishop. Uh, this is not impressive. Not impressive at all. Push pawn again. 
My word, this is terrible. Push the pawn again. Rook here. Is that it? That should be it. King moves. Knight check. King e6. And we're going to be okay. Knight c7, king d7. Rook f7, king c6. And I think we can breathe again. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was trying to work out if he could try and create some kind of mating net, but my king's just running away. Oh, well, we won again. Excellent. Adding another rating point to our total. Oh, wait, e4. Excellent. Uh, let's see if we can do another Grand Prix. Ah, 2e6. Quite a legitimate way of playing against this opening. Uh, is it queen e2 the best move here? Something like that. Got to keep an eye on the time as well. I've got to, I'm very conscious that I want to allow John plenty of time to stumble his way through tonight's challenge position. Although, having said which, he did really, really well on the last one. So, um, so we will, we shall see. Yeah, we've got plenty of time. Uh, one quick series after this. Maybe I'll I'll think I'll switch to some one miniatures after this matchup. I think that makes sense to me. So get ready with your one minute challenges straight after this game. Um, uh, all right. Am I going B three or d3 let's go b3 bishop b2 i like double fear and chattering someone asked me to double fear and chatter at some point oh uh, that moves quite good i have to say i'm really impressed with how tc is playing the opening in these games let's just go back anything i'm getting outplayed at various points in these games but Hopefully my experience is what's winning out in the end. But as I start to tire, anything could happen. And I have to say, I've kind of got my fingers crossed I can make my way throughout this show without throwing away any horrendous losses. Although I did already hang a mate in one, as was pointed out. But, you know, we've all been there. I just hope no one turns it into a highlight somewhere that comes back to bite me. Anyway, uh, so I'm forcing this knight away from d5. It's just a really strong piece in the centre of the board. So I want to go c4 and tell it to go away. Am I trapping that knight? No, it can go to c2 at the moment. But now I'm threatening a3 and the knight's got no retreat squares. So he might consider a5 so his knight can go back to a6. The other move he can play is maybe knight d4, giving the knight a retreat space in this direction. And that is in fact what he goes for. Uh, and now rook b1 makes sense, I think. I don't know. I feel like I'm being outplayed again. I feel like I'm being outplayed again. Let's just play this. And then take some g2 king takes queen check i think i'm just going back to g1 because i don't want to swap queens but in no way am i better in this game I'm trying to think if there's any reason to possibly go to h3 and it's not inconceivable but it's probably stupid in the grand scheme of things uh oh yeah, that knight is annoying me go away Okay, good. Alright, now the bishop out. I'm going to try and make g4 a good move at some point. Probably sooner rather than later, as so I've just hung this pawn. Ugh. Bishop d2 was not a good move. Uh, can I just go back? Forwards, not backwards. Uh, I mean, he didn't take the pawn on a3 last go, so he probably won't take it this go. Uh, that's, that's some pretty joined up thinking there. But, um, yeah. Uh, I think that I'm giving up this pawn is just a sign I don't really like my position all that much. 
so let's see which way he's recapturing here. Uh, of course he takes this way. And now all my idea is to bring my knight back to g3. And maybe get f5 going. So I'm not completely planless, even if I am slightly clueless. Uh, is bishop b4 a good move? Not really. Let's just go back. I kind of just want to make this game about the king side now. Just because the less I look at the other side of the board, the better right now. Can I go f5 if he goes rook f7? Or should I be doing something more sensible like bishop b4? I think now might, might be the time to do something sensible. But... Then again, this show is not called Sensible Attack, so we're going to go f5. Um, he can take on d2. Oh, now he grabs that pawn. He hadn't forgotten about it. Well, on we march. Bravely marching on. To what end, we do not know. Uh, we cannot retreat. Uh, we probably don't have any compensation. But... Um, Maybe we do now. We're, we're just going to mate him. Alright, am, am I threatening mate in some number of moves? Queen g4 certainly looks incredibly dangerous. Oh, wow. He's let me play it. Queen there, queen there. f7, king d8. I don't see the win. Hang on. Uh, queen check, queen check. Uh, queen check. I've got a perpetual, but... I so feel like there's a win in this position, but I'm just going to take back. Because I am down to 45 seconds. And I have a pretty dangerous looking attack. Whether it is actually dangerous or not remains to be seen. Let's bring a rook into the fray. Swing it, in, it across in some way. Uh, if king h8, maybe rook g5 doesn't matter if these moves are good. I'm just going to play them quickly and confidently. And I will bluster my way to victory. Actually, we are massively running out of time. So I think we will go straight on to the challenge position. Uh, King h3. I like h3. Or is knight e4 a better move? Uh, let's just go king h3. It's a cool move. All of my pieces are going forward. King leads from the front. And all right, rook b1. 23 seconds against 27. I always budget not enough time for three two games. They take more than six minutes. More like eight. Eight or nine. Uh, so I'm trying to get some rook b8 ideas to float in. Uh, let's just bring a queen in. If I put enough pieces next to his king, I'll win. Uh, he's putting pieces defending his king. That was cunning. Uh, knight move. And then I'm going to go back to attacking down the g file. King goes forward. Forward, forward, forward. What could go wrong? Queen goes forward again. Uh, rook across. Uh, bishop moves f7, bishop b7, knight f6. Oh, bishop b7. What? I can take that. Surely this is winning. Uh, yeah, and it's mate in two. Queen takes, rook h7, queen here. Oh, yeah, we are mate in three. Rook g7, queen takes mate. And there we go. And again we breathe. Well, we our rating survived the show. Uh, I think we picked up 12 rating points. I'm going to say good games to my opponent. I'm not certain how good that game was. I did offer that pawn on A3 for a while. But... But yeah, we did it, guys. Um, the only thing we've got left to do now in the show is for John to join me over on camera as we go through our... Um, this week's challenge position. 
Let me just shimmy across over oh. here. And uh, All yeah, right. welcome, John. Hello. Um, so this is we're on the. Uh, let me see. Let's go ahead and do that there. There we go. So this is not the. Uh, I guess we've been on a different theme almost of challenge position every every couple of weeks now. So this isn't really a. Oh my goodness, white's about to make black position. But uh -huh. it's certainly quite fun. Um, so for starters, black isn't castled. And if there's something I can do to stop black from castling, generally speaking, especially with the theme of the show, that tends to be quite good. Sure. White's also got a couple of pawn breaks available. And um, the, the queen on c7 for black isn't defended by anything else. Okay. So th those are all kind of things that I took into consideration before looking at what moves uh, I would want to play. The candidate moves I picked were d4, e4, knight takes g6, and uh, and bishop c4. Do you, do you mean d5 and e5? I meant d5 and e5. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. Squares. Um, All right, why don't you pick the, the two that you think are best? Okay. Um, so start with your... Second best move. Ooh. That's not fair, because I haven't actually worked out what my best move is yet. But I do know what my top two are. Okay. Uh, so, uh, my top two candidate moves are e5 and bishop c4. Okay. And uh, to, to quickly talk through the other moves, because at least one person mentioned it in chat, um, d5 is kind of an interesting move, but... Uh, Black, after c5, starts to gum up the position ever so slightly. Yeah, also I have a kind of feeling that it allows this bishop into the game. Ah, uh, we don't worry about bishops, they're fine. Uh, I worry about bishops. <laughs> and also the follow-up after d5, c5, bishop b5 check, doesn't really do very much, because black, for example, can just play bishop d7 and block everything, and it's defended by both knights, and one of those knights allows the dark sword bishop to actually come raking down the board. So what are you doing? Not a lot. Sure. So I'm not convinced d5 is the move. And knight takes g6 is fun, and it's absolutely the move that everyone at home should want to play if you're a fan of hack attack. Unfortunately, I don't think it's very sound, because I can't work out what the follow-up is afterwards. Well, I mean, you get one pawn for the piece, and even if, even if you got the second pawn, you probably wouldn't have enough, but... I'm not certain you have enough after king f7, for example. Yeah, the king's not super safe in this position, but yeah. there just aren't enough open lines for well, to do See, much. what you really need here is another knight, but you've just given up one of them. So, oh. you know. Oh, well. So I don't, I don't really like the piece sack. No. So now on to the moves that I think might end up being uh, the most useful. The most interesting move, I think, is e5. Because uh, after e5... I really don't think black wants to take, because after e5 takes takes, black then has to move his knight. And he's moving his knight in a position where he hasn't castled, and white's got an open file with the queen and rook down the d5. Just quickly, why does black have to move his knight? Uh, because otherwise it gets captured. After, so after e5 takes takes, you mean? Yeah. Uh, and I mean, after e5 takes takes, if queen recaptures, you then have queen d8 checkmate, which right. is pretty useful. That's worth pointing out. Yeah. So, cha-ching. Because otherwise, that would be perfectly good for black. But this queen d8 move is uh, is pretty useful. It's pretty strong. It's, it's yeah. pretty strong. Wouldn't miss it in a blitz game or anything. No, not at all. No. Not at all. Um, so, assuming... Before I go into moving the knight, assuming black takes the pawn once, we've got e5. D takes e5. D takes e5. Black could move the knight to d5. And... I had a continuation after that, but I forgot what it was. I think it was simply me capturing with the knight on f4 yeah. on d5 and then claiming a pawn with a good position and I'm attacking the rook on a8 at the end of it. That looks pretty reasonable to me. Yeah. Uh, now, if black doesn't capture on e5, because obviously it's an option, uh, I've looked as far as e5, uh, knight d7, e6, which I think is lots of fun. Uh, unf uh, but... I think I can just play e5, knight d5, and I'm not actually 100% certain what I'm doing in that resultant position. Other than exchanging off the knights to double black's pawns on the d-file, I don't know what I'm accomplishing as white. I don't feel like I'm breaking anything open. Okay, well it's worth saying that I think this 
probably wins for white. Fun. I, I mean, like by, by by fun, I mean it's just horrendous. Black can't take. Ooh, black certainly can't go f six. That's silly. <laughs> black can't take because these two pieces would be forked. So that's just a free bishop. And if you have to move the knight again, well, we get something looking like this, I guess. I, I'm happy with this position. I mean, white normally gives up a lot of... This is exactly like the knight takes g6 variation with an extra knight. So, pretty good for white. Yeah, so that's not bad at all. So, but there is... And then we just discussed e5, knight d5 instead of knight d7. Sure. Which enters the whole queen on d5 attacking everything and you still have in castle territory. Sure. Which is great. Um, so, I can't find a line where e5 is bad. Okay. Um, but that said, that's as far as I could see into e5. So, I, I haven't actually seen it through to the end of the game, other than I know it's good. Sure. Bishop c4, uh, I think is interesting, because if black tries to castle after bishop c4, I'm looking to see if their, uh, white can play knight takes g6 straight away, so castles isn't a move immediately available. Yeah. Um, which mean oh, <laughs> it's refusing to let you castle. Yeah, I think it's because I set the position up rather than play. It's not a big ah, problem. okay. Yeah, yeah. So if black if black castles, then you play knight takes g six. You can't recapture because it's pinning the I, king. I and... think it's any position that I uh, that I set up. It will never allow black to castle. That, that, that's, <laughs> that, that's how hack attack challenges work. Exactly. But of course, after um, bishop c four, black doesn't have to castle. There are plenty of options. Sure. Um, black can the the most obvious move is d5, so bishop c4 d5, and after the pawns capture once, it black appears to have enough pieces defending. So pawn captures and pawn captures. Uh, oh, well, you could you could maybe play bishop takes here, but you you have to give up the two bishops in order to. Yeah, win. and then black plays knight takes. Or oh, you take that, and then I think the queen either. Oh, okay. I was looking at either um, maybe queen d6, but that's yeah. perfectly fine. Maybe queen here looks maybe stronger, because there are some knight b6 ideas, but we can take on a2 and we're threatening mate. It's a bit... It feels like white's lost a lot of control to me. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hurry you along. Okay. Uh, I need a choice. Bishop c4 or e5? Uh, I like e5 more out of the two. Okay. Certainly, I think this is the best move, but the critical decision is what are you playing after knight d5? You've got a minute to impress us, John. Okay. Um, let me see. Next here. No, takes, takes. Uh, after this move, I'm playing E takes D6. I'll go with the most forcing move available to me at the moment. Queen then takes. Um, I'm then... I'm then playing Knight takes Knight. I'm claiming black has, oh. has some kind of advantage here. You weren't we've supposed already, to do We've that. already got the counter-attack on A2. Okay, nah. so you've done a pretty good job here. How did right, that happen? Very, very quickly from the start. Yeah. Uh, E5 is critical, because if white doesn't play it now, black is threatening to play E5 himself. Sure, and once he does that... And then, yeah. then the fun times go away. White might still have an edge, but very, very different position. So E5... Yep. Here. And now the point is, obviously, after knight d7, the move you want to play is e6. Yes. Point is, you want to be playing this move anyway. You're prepared to give give up a pawn in order to mess up his position. We're not prepared okay. to give up a piece. So he play. So if he takes with the pawn, we're having g6. Yep. Off. Yep. That makes sense. And if he takes with the bishop, you're having the bishop off, and yeah, then playing we're bishop having... d3. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And uh, and black struggling to defend this pawn anyway in this position. Mm -hmm. So th this kind of break with e5 e6 is a really, really important one to look out for, especially in Perkmon type positions, but it comes up in Karakans, comes up in all kinds of things, and it gets absolutely one of the most crucial kind of ideas for any attacking player out there. In one minute or less, what refutes bishop c4? Um, I'm, well, I'm just curious. Like to... e, e5 or d5. Like, okay. If you don't go e5, black can go e5. Right, so, okay, timers sure. of the essence. Okay. So, that's my 20 seconds or less answer. Cool, cool. Oh, and, and pick that, the right move. And, and that's the show. Well, you pick you pick the move, but not, not for the right reasons. Not, not the whole, not the whole thing, but you know, I'll give you I'll give you a, a B minus. There you go. All right. Anyway, we've got uh, Grandmaster Simon Williams coming up in just a second with spicy chess. So don't go anywhere, as there is lots more coming up on today's Chess Monday. All right, guys, take care, and we'll see you in two weeks' time.